What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV. Back at y'all with another one. So I want to talk about something, man. You know, um, we have the truth. Earl the Truth Spence Jr. Undefeated, unified, welterweight, superstar boxer, world champion. Holds the IBF and the WBC. Coming off of two major victories in his career. Dominating. Four division Mexican superstar boxer Mikey Garcia and coming off a of fight of the year thriller with two time welterweight world champion Showtime Sean Porter right at the Staples Center two paper two successful pay per view events 300,000 pay per view buys with Mikey Garcia 350,000 pay per view buys with Showtime Sean Porter Give or take. I know people going to come here and they're going to say, well, no, it was 329,000. That's why I'm making this video. No, it wasn't 300,000. It was 299,000. That's why I'm making this video. <clears throat> Errol Spence's success has become his worst enemy. I'll say this again. Errol Spence's success has become his worst enemy. Why you say that, Blue? Since Errol Spence <clears throat> has become a serious threat to fans' favorite fighters, whether that favorite fighter be once beaten former unified welterweight superstar boxer Keith One Time Thurman, whether it comes in the form of undefeated pound for pound WBO welterweight superstar king Terrence Bud Crawford, whether it comes in the form of British UK former world champion Special K Cal Brook, whether it came in the form of four division Mexican superstar boxer. Mikey Garcia, whether it came in the form of two time welterweight uh, world champion, superstar boxer, Showtime Sean Porter, whether it came in the form of or comes in the form of eight division Filipino superstar boxer, Manny Pac Man Pacquiao, you know, these are the guys that are a lot of fans' favorite fighters. Mainly Terrence Crawford, Keith Thurman, and Manny Pacquiao. And Mikey Garcia, right? <laughs> Once Errol Spence became a threat to put a blemish on their resume, Errol Spence was looked at as the boogeyman in the division. Why was he looked at as the boogeyman in the division? Let's talk about this. Errol Spence was calling out these gentlemen for quite some time and couldn't land the opportunity. That's what happened. They asked him to go through the ranking system, grab a title, and then they'll give him an opportunity. Also, I forgot. Two division, former unified, junior welterweight, superstar boxer, Danny Swift Garcia. I forgot Danny Garcia. I apologize for that. Right? He was calling out Danny Garcia. He was chasing Keith Thurman. Uh, he's he was currently chasing Manny Pacquiao until this unfortunate, horrific situation that took place with him. Um, <clears throat> he was chasing Sean Porter. Terrence Crawford's situation is new. Okay, he wasn't chasing Sean Porter. You understand? Uh, Sean Porter. I mean, excuse me, Terrence Crawford. He wasn't chasing Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford's situation is new because Terrence Crawford just recently, he's new to the welterweight division. He campaigned in the lower divisions. And now currently he's he's on his, I want to say he fought Jeff Horn, he fought uh, Jose Benavidez, 
Uh, he fought Amir Khan, and now he's on his way to fighting Kavakuskis, the Mean Machine, December 14th. So he's only had three fights in his division. But he's 32 years of age. Right? So Terrence Crawford campaigned at 140, 135. You know, lower weight classes. I believe he even campaigned at 130, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. Uh, with that said, it's new. I talked about Errol Spence making a comeback. And and I saw people saying, come back from what? How could he make a comeback in the comment section? I saw people making comments. Oh, he got to he gotta do something. He got to redeem himself. I saw people making comments that he was ducking. He was using his situation to duck. I saw disturbing comments in the comment section when it relates to Errol Spence. We all saw and witnessed the car. We all know that he was in a horrific car accident. How could he possibly be ducking anybody? How could he have to redeem himself to anybody? Redeem himself to who? Who does Errol Spence have to redeem himself to? He just beat Mikey Garcia. He just beat Sean Porter. He was trying to uh, land a fight with eight division Filipino superstar Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao that you got guys like boxing pundits like Max Kellerman saying he's the greatest of all time. He had a greater resume than Floyd Mayweather, right? This is the, this is the guy that Manny uh, uh, Errol Spence was, was trying to get a unification bout with after he finished the Sean Porter fight. Whether, whether you thought, I see people saying, oh, he's ducking the Sean Porter rematch. How could he be ducking the Sean Porter rematch when Sean Porter himself said he didn't want to fight Errol Spence coming off of such a situation? How could he be ducking the rematch? He, so he purposely got into a car accident to duck Sean Porter's rematch? He purposely got into a car accident not to fight Terrence Crawford? He purposely put almost risk losing, resulting in a, a loss of life, not to fight Terrence Crawford, not to fight Sean Porter in a rematch. Does that even sound correct to you? And I know some of the people who sit there, Twitter fingers and, you know, so on and so forth. But the fact that you guys actually put that in the universe is disturbing to me. A lot of the comments I, I went through the comment section and I deleted them. I deleted them. It's disturbing. It truly is. Right? Because if you feel like that this man decided to put himself through a horrific situation to avoid fighting Terrence Crawford and Sean Porter rematch, something's wrong with you. And if you can't be sensitive enough to understand what he's going through, then you're inhumane. That's the truth. So all of this is stemming from the fact that people don't like that Errol Spence was referred to as the boogeyman in the division. That's what this stems from. Because you're a fan of a, a, a certain fighter and you, you refuse to accept that your fighter don't want to fight Errol Spence. And so he was labeled the boogeyman. He didn't put that jacket on himself. He didn't start naming himself the boogeyman in division. No, all he did was pursue the big fights in his division. What as we do as fans is to ask these guys to do is to display the fact that they want to prove that they are the best. This is what we ask them to do. We ask them to display this type of behavior. And so when he displays this type of behavior and go after the Keith Thurmans and go after the Sean Porters and go after the Danny Garcias and go after the Manny Pacquiao's, that in turn, in return, what he gets in return is disdain. But this will be the same people 
in a, in the very next situation where they don't have a dog in the race and they just a fan of the sport of boxing at that point. When I mean they don't have a dog in the race, if you referring to somebody else, two other fighters that they don't they don't they not uh, head over heels about. It could go either way with them, right? Then they'll say, we just want to see the best fight the best. But when it comes to Errol Spence, his it's, it's disdain comes his way. He don't deserve it. And I know people going to say, well, see, because he didn't want to fight Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford is Johnny come lately to the welterweight division. And guess what? I was a big advocate for the Terrence Crawford Errol Spence fight. Because I think it's the biggest fight in the sport of boxing outside of Deontay Wilder versus the winner of Joshua and Ruiz for Undisputed. Outside of that, it's the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. And the only reason I feel like Wilder and the winner of Joshua Ruiz trumps that is because it's the heavyweight division, baby. The heavyweight division runs the sport of boxing and Deontay Wilder is the most exciting fighter Currently, today, the most explosive must see TV. So imagine him in an undisputed heavyweight bout and he's undefeated. Listen, but that's for another story. That's for another video. Right now, we're talking about Errol Spence. And I cannot believe the disdain that this man gets for pursuing to be the best in the world. So I see people talking about, well, he shouldn't have got behind the wheel. Those same people that are saying that are people that shouldn't get behind the wheel. And they get behind the wheel. <laughs> right? So, I ain't going to say what I was getting ready to say. We're talking about a young man. He's a young man. He made mistakes. And I'm pretty sure the people that say that, that that's claiming he shouldn't have did that, you made plenty of mistakes probably quadruple the amount of mistakes he made in his young life and his young career guess what regardless this is the first time he's made a mistake that affected his career that could have affected his career and the only reason i say it affected his career is because he was already set to fight january 25th against that same danny garcia that he was pursuing so he's landed in the fights that he was uh pursuing and yet we take the opportunity to say it's not enough. It's not enough. He'd been pursuing Danny Garcia before Terrence Crawford came on the scene. He was pursuing Sean Porter before Terrence Crawford came on the scene. He was pursuing Keith Thurman before Terrence Crawford came on the scene. He was pursuing Manny Pacquiao before Terrence Crawford came on the scene. Now he's getting ready to land back to back to back. Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia, and yet you want to fault him for fighting the best. Name me fighters that's better than him. Outside of you trying to say Terrence Crawford. Because, okay, let's say he was to fight Terrence Crawford next and he was successful against the Ter Terrence Crawford and victorious against Terrence Crawford, then where did he go next? What you want him to do? Go up and wait and fight Jamal Charlo? Huh? Go up and wait and fight Demetrius Andre? Huh? You want him to go up there and fight Canelo Alvarez? Right? So, but you, but you, so after that, He's going to be looking to fight a Danny Garcia. Right? And you ain't going to complain about it. You going to be satisfied that you got the Terrence Crawford fight? No, because y'all never going to be satisfied as boxing fans. Never. Floyd Mayweather could never satisfy the boxing fans. Sugar Ray Leonard could never satisfy the boxing fans. And, they, and he fought in the golden era. The quote-unquote so-called golden era. Tommy, Tommy the Hitman Hearns, he fought Sugar Ray Leonard. He fought Hagler. He fought Duran. Yet, it was always somebody that you wanted to see him fight again. Right? Sugar Ray Leonard fought Hearns, Hagler, Duran. But he never fought Aaron Pryor. You see how that works? Floyd Mayweather has fought and beat more champions than anybody in the history of the sport of boxing. But he fought them all too late. So you never satisfy as a fan. So you going to tell me Errol Spence fights and satisfy your, your thirst for the Crawford Spence fight? Successful in that fight?
Because at the end of the day, the people that screaming that they want to see him fight Crawford is the people that believe Crawford is going to win the fight. Now let that sink in. Because then, once he defeats Crawford, you still want to see him lose. You're still going to want to see him lose. So in return, you're going to ask for him to fight Canelo Alvarez. In return, you're going to ask him to go up and fight Arthur Better Beef. Oh, oh, uh, Canelo Alvarez did it. Why can't he? The disdain for Errol Spence is unwarranted. Errol Spence is only doing what we ask as, as boxing fans. And don't tell me what your favorite uh, uh, boxing pundit or YouTube uh, 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 media or anybody else has to say about it because nine times out of ten, check their background and they don't like Errol Spence and they never have. Check their background. I'm almost certain that's the case. Errol Spence needs to deserve to come back when he come back and he needs to be applauded for what he's doing. And he's still, he's still looking to get back in the ring to grace the ring again for your entertainment, for your entertainment. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> the disdain Errol Spence get is unwarranted. It's not cool. Give that man his roses while he can smell them. Give them all their roses while they can smell them. The ones that deserve it. And they all deserve it because they put their life on the line every time they step through the ropes for our entertainment. I personally know that as we lost Patrick Day. So give them the man his roses while he can smell them. He went through a horrific situation that anybody could have went through. So how dare you guys say that he's ducking anybody? When he come back, because I said that, who is he going to fight when he comes back? I said, uh, um, he shouldn't fight a Danny Garcia or a Manny Pacquiao or Sean Porter straight away coming back. He got to get, he, he suffered a horrific situation and mentally he has to get back into a space where he's used to and comfortable. And so facing a guy you know, uh, uh, he, uh, a mandatory that um, somebody mentioned the mandatory that um, Luis Colazo just fought. That gentleman. Face him. Get your feet wet again. Get your, get get back in the groove of the groove of things. Get back in the public eye. Before you just jump in there and 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 and, and jump back in directly into the the mainstream spotlight. Because he already must see TV. He's already must see TV. So get back in there with uh, 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 um, a guy just to get your feet wet. Right? Uh, Luis Colazo just fought Kudratulo Abdul Kavkarov. Karav, however you say his name. Fight him. Get your feet wet. Get used to... The 10,000 questioners talking about the accident and not talking about the fight at hand. Get used to the 10,000 questions about uh, uh, what was you doing before that. Get used to the, the 10,000 questions coming about, you know, uh, are, are you going to have you change your life? Get used to those 10,000 questions about uh, 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 what did your family think? What took place? Get used to that. Get over that. Get past that. That's a distraction. And you can't dare go in the fight. No disrespect to, to this gentleman that I'm, uh, Luis Galazzo just fought. But get, get back used to it. Get your feet wet. Then you go into a fight of that caliber. That's a distraction. You don't go into a Terrence Crawford fight with that distraction. You don't go into a, a, a Sean Porter fight rematch with that distraction you don't go into a danny garcia fight with that distraction you don't go into a manny pacquiao fight with that type of distraction that's not the type of distraction you 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 take with you going into a fight like that a caliber of fight like that with a caliber of fighter like that so you take your time but that's all i got for y'all y'all already know what it is it's your boy blue blue blood sports tv Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. You haven't subscribed? 
Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Bus Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire L D B C. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.